My name is Sara Cardona uh, and I am a uh, visual artist. I principally work in collage, so my medium is paper. Um, I got into collage uh, coming out of doing other things like painting and drawing and um, I used to cut, cut up my own drawings and um, paintings and I realized that what really excited me was the kind of editing process of putting things together, images together that I couldn't have possibly conceived of on my own. So that's one of the exciting things about collage and um, I hope that you will enjoy this process too. Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of different things that you can do with collage. Um, obviously you're going to be sourcing from different um, materials, magazines, newspapers, books. Um, so depending on what your source is, um, you might have things that have more people and um, backgrounds in them. So this is an example of doing something figurative and um, you can do an additive process which is adding things or you can even use reductive process which is leaving spaces open and finding surprising ways of popping things in. Um, sometimes after a collage I actually go in and cut out pieces so you can have spaces in them. This would be an example of just something with abstract um, you know colors and shapes. So there are so many different ways to do collage. Um, I've started doing some freeform collage, which means that um, they're not even on a square piece of paper. Uh, I mount these on um, like a type of uh, cardboard and then stack them and uh, glue them all down and then it would um, hang on the wall like a freeform. Um, you can go from very small to very large. So this is an example of a much larger collage. Um, but hopefully what I'll show you today is a lot of what's interesting about collage is the actual moving around and finding ways in which you can have things work together. Um, so those are just a couple of samples of pieces that I've made in the past uh, with depending on the materials, um, things ranging from figurative to abstract. So the next thing I wanted to share with you is about sourcing your materials. And in general, um, while uh, old books and newspapers make great material, um, you do want to think a little bit about the weight of your paper. And so um, I look for magazines or books that have a little bit of a heavier weight to them. And also you, you know, um, want to use your instinct about things that are of interest to you. So um, I gravitate towards bright colors and I don't try to think too much about what's in them, but I do look for, for images that um, take up a full page because you'll have more material to work with. So something like a colorful fashion magazine or furniture magazine or um, you know, whatever you come across, if, if you find that it takes up a lot of the paper, then you'll have uh, great images to work with. Um, old uh, life books, life magazine books are great. Um, so you can always go to like uh, your local um, half price books or one of these uh, bookstores that sells older things and um, they're very cheap and they make great material. I also like to take time um, cutting things out ahead of time. So a lot of people would just rip out a piece from a magazine, start cutting out, that's great. Um, but oftentimes what I like to do is, is take, you know, 30, 40 minutes and just go through things and cut out shapes um, so that I have a little pile of interesting pieces to work with and that makes the what I would call editorial process a little easier. So I'll just cut out uh, say, for example, extract a shape, maybe leave an edge to it, um, or even just tear out a piece that might have an, an interesting part to it. But that will give you a whole kind of little pile of things to source from um, so that you don't have to keep looking through magazines. Um, that that uh, helps when you're actually working, having a source to go to. Everyone likes to work in a different way, as I mentioned. You might want to just, you know, sit with a bunch of magazines and cut things out 
depending how far along you want to take collage if you really get into it I'm just showing you some other things you can do sometimes um, when I'm in the mood just to cut and not glue things I'll sort of sort them out by colors and um, so here I've, I've made a, a bag of you know very neutral colors um, I have one of just black uh, blue but I'm I'm a little bit mm, more structured that way so there isn't any right or wrong um, but it is nice to have you know uh, a, a good source of, of material ready to go so um, so that's a little bit about organizing uh, all the things that you might want to use the next thing I want to share with you is to talk a little bit about your space because we're going to be using glue and of course glue is a little messy so um, I actually think it's kind of important to have everything ready to go ahead of time and have a place where you have ample space to spread out and um, and to kind of keep things clean as you're going so that it doesn't affect your actual collage where you start having things tear or get sticky because that can get really frustrating. Um, so you want to find a good work table, a kitchen table, or maybe a large dining table and cover it with um, some um, craft paper that you can get the kind that you wrap up packages with. Or if you don't have that, uh, maybe a plastic tablecloth. Or even um, you can do this with um, bags from the grocery store. So if you have paper bags, you can cut them up and just sort of tape them down on your table and that will protect your table and give you a good area where you can make a mess. Okay, so um, now I wanna show you a little bit uh, what you will actually need on your table so that you can get working. Um, what I've done is I've cut several pieces of um, paper bags from the grocery store. Uh, so that when you're gluing you have something to glue onto. That's really important. Um, you can also just use, if you don't have these, you can also just use like um, printer paper um, or any kind of newspaper, uh, extra paper that you do not need or use or want just to have so that you can glue pieces on and you'll be wanting to throw those away and in order to not make a huge mess you take a, a your trash bag and put a liner in it or just use a paper bag from the grocery store that you can throw away later on so um, that's going to help you keep your area clean we're going to be using yes paste um, i like this paste instead of liquid glue because it's easy to manipulate and it doesn't warp or bubble your paper um, also you can lift it up carefully and um, move it around if you need to uh, so this is very easy to find you can find it um, on Amazon you can find it at craft stores um, and it works very well for all kinds of collage so you can use it also for making books or other projects and it's great also for kids for those of you guys who have kids at home it's easy to clean up it dilutes with water and it's also um, uh, fairly durable so it'll last a long time um, the other thing that you will need is uh, these little pieces of chipboard which um, you can get from cutting up cardboard uh, I cut them up ahead of time so you should have you know probably 15 20 at least for for a collage because we're going to use these almost like a butter knife to spread this paste um, onto your paper and then the last thing you will need is the actual paper that you're going to work on. I like to use this kind of little bit thicker Bristol board, um, but you guys can use anything really. Uh, even the cardboard that comes uh, in t-shirts when you buy a t-shirt works great. Um, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, chipboard out there that works fine too. Even old um, hardback book covers work really well if you want to cut those with a X-Acto knife and just use the book covers. Um, but today we're going to be working on this piece of Bristol board. Okay, the other thing obviously that we're going to need is um, something to cut with. So I have various scissors. I realize uh, most people just have your standard scissors at home, which probably look like this. And that works great. But um, small, uh, sharp scissors with a, um, a sharp tip like this are really nice for getting into um, little detailed areas. So for example, if you want to, you know, cut very close to an edge, 
having a smaller scissor that you can um, kind of manipulate works really well so you get nice crisp sharp clean edges so um, you might think a little bit about having a variety of scissors if you're able to maybe two sizes the other thing that you'll want to have is a paper plate or a plate that you don't mind getting glue on I use a little tin plate that I can clean up and a paper towel that you wet and then squeeze out the water so that it's damp and this just works like those things they have at the post office for wiping your fingers off but it's going to be very helpful to keep your um, your hands clean and the glue off of the rest of the paper. So these are some important things also to have around when you're ready to get started. So the next thing we're going to do is start working on our collage. And um, one thing I wanted to share with you is the idea of um, laying things out and having fun moving things around and playing with uh, just seeing how images come together. Um, this is where you're going to be working with um, what I say is your instinct. You look for things that are of interest and sometimes less is more. So if you find two or three or even four maybe things that you really, really like and move them around and kind of play with how they work together. Um, I often find that to be very gratifying rather than having lots of little pieces. But again, it, there's all kinds of collage. So there are certainly collage artists who have worked with minutia and tiny, tiny little pieces. It's really about your sensibility and your aesthetic. Um, but I, I do like to work with uh, fewer elements and see if I can find ways to um, create interesting configurations. So I've got a pile of things that I've kind of instinctually grabbed. Um, and as I mentioned, some of it was pre-cut in terms of just shapes, um, so that I can play with shapes, but I'll continue to cut and refine as, um, as I put the collage together. So I'm gonna see if I can um, just pick out a few elements. Um, I think I had this one that was of interest to me. Uh, got a lot of blues and pinks here, so I think color-wise I'm gravitating towards them today but again you know you can have a whole pile of different things that you want to work with um, so grab a couple of maybe just a few things um, so now I might get into um, laying things out uh, trying out different ways of, of putting things together um, Sometimes having a piece like this that has an edge and then an open space makes a nice way of creating a frame so you can line things up. Um, but this, this is just really the area where you might just move things around and before you commit to gluing things, see how, how things might work together. So, I'll let you guys uh, spend a little time um, looking for that. So for example, uh, here I see some drapery and another piece of drapery. So I might, um, you know, find an interesting connectivity here where one element that's like another might come out. So I like that. Uh, but this is, this is just where you're making your choices as to how you want to lay things out. And then, um, once you do that, uh, so here I might find a way in which these things kind of have a relationship. And you can lay things over or under and play with that element too. So one thing might come up over another one, but might tuck in under something else. Um, a lot of collage is really just very playful and figuring out how things relate to one another and where you can make interesting connections. Um, and you might need to recut some pieces. I'm liking the way this, this particular piece feels sort of freeform and open. So here's another maybe drapey piece. Yeah, so I want to just move things around and experiment um, and have
have fun and see what you can connect together. Um, so once you feel like you have what you want, uh, I often actually take a picture with my camera phone if I want to refer back to it um, because you will be moving the pieces around. So if you really committed to something, uh, that's one way of remembering how you had laid it out. But again, it, it's you may be a more spontaneous person. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, that's one method that I have found uh, after I've really decided on a composition. Uh, it helps me kind of refer back to where the pieces are. Once we'll start gluing them, we'll be moving them off the paper and putting them back on the paper. So one thing about collage is that it never exactly comes out um, precisely the way you want it to. You have to be fluid and flexible and and uh, be open to the fact that it'll be in flux a little bit until you start putting the pieces down. So um, now I've kind of laid out the collage as I want it. Um, I might still refine a few pieces. So when I see an edge that maybe I now in relationship to whatever else is there, I might, you know, clean up a little bit of an edge. So this is a little piece of a Jaguar, but Obviously, I want it to be recognizable, but I also liked the way it's blending into this other kind of strange feathery wing. Um, you can just kind of go in and, you know, trim and cut as you need, uh, maybe to help your collage sort of come together. Um, and again, it's, it's hard to describe this because everybody's aesthetic is going to be different. You might like the kind of rough edges of a newspaper and maybe not refined. Um, so each collage is going to require its own things. But I think the uh, important part is just uh, once you've made your kind of editorial choices, if you need to go in and trim up anything you can. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about how I glue the pieces down together. One thing before you start is you want to kind of think about which pieces you laid down first. So I'm remembering back that this, this was the big piece, the main piece that I had, because now I'm going to have to pull things off of here and kind of remember where, where I had everything. And that's why it's, it's nice to have a, a photo sometimes. Um, I'm going to take this piece, which is um, this kind of newsprint paper, this little pink elephant. Take your piece of paper that you're going to be gluing on and um, flip it over and you're going to take one of these uh, little chip board cards and we're going to use the yes paste almost like butter on a knife and so this is where you want to just spread very thinly and the reason i work on paper is so that i can go off the edge of the paper here so if you don't have something underneath you're going to want to not spread all the way across and that's very important because gluing edges down gives you a nice crisp clean uh, collage so, um, so I'm going to spread this glue out like so and, and as I'm working um, you know uh, I would say try not to to put load up too much because when you put this down, it's going to squeeze out around the side. So it is a little bit of a, a, a test, you know, to see, uh, to get enough on here, but not too much. And I've been holding it down, so that's why I have this piece of uh, wet paper so I can clean up my hands. I throw this in the trash can, and that's why we have the plastic and the liner, so you can just keep throwing all that glue away and keep your area clean. And now I'm going to kind of remember that I had it sort of in the middle here and lay it down, you take a clean piece and you can kind of just spread this out. And as you can see, um, unlike regular Elmer's glue or a liquid glue, this gives you a nice flat, no bubbling, no curling, this type of paste. So I'm looking at my collage and I'm remembering um, where things are going. So. The good thing about this paste is you can always move things around a little bit. I'm going to put the next piece down, which is this one. And again, just smoothing out the glue. And this piece of paper is actually from a 
printer, so you can really use all kinds of textures that, um, you know, adds a dimension to the collage. Clean my fingers. And then again, you want to take a dry piece and move it around a little bit, line things up where you want it. And um, I tend to try to keep things as clean as possible. So once I've used up one side, I fold it over just so as to not get more glue on the paper. I'm going to glue this piece down, which is um, from a magazine, and get a fresh So collage comes from the French word for, for glue. It's kind of like collate. It's co uh, cola or something like that. But it's, um, it's basically to put things together. And one of the things I like so much about collage is it feel, feels a little bit like putting together a movie. All these characters and you have a background, your mise-en-scene or your, um, your setting. Um, if you're working figuratively, so um, that's like storytelling in a way, and these kind of crazy things that didn't belong together come together in an interesting way. I'm going to look back at my photograph to remember what else I had. So I had this piece of fabric, which is going to cover her arm. I keep my space clean. Do the next piece. I'm probably going a little fast because I'm I get in the zone and I'm used to this, but you should take your time and really um, explore how how these kind of strange pieces can all go together. And So here's an area where I am going to have to overlay and underlay. So um, actually, if you find that you've stuck something down, you need to lift it up. You can use the edge of your scissors, but that's why this glue is nice because this is going to get tucked under here in a moment. So I might just leave that lifted up. And I'm going to jump over here and build up this side. And again, you want to go all the way past the edge. So really, it's important to have enough of these like little paper bags or pieces of paper so that as you're working, uh, you have plenty. And, um, okay. That one I'll go ahead and lay, lay out. Keep your hands clean. All right, so now I've got a um, piece that's coming in this way right here. And you can kind of fold these for the smaller pieces. I sometimes just fold over and use another part of the bag. Or if you're working with a lot of small pieces, then maybe you just need a small, small pieces of bag to work on. Um, and I've got some flowers in here, so kind of check on see how I'm gonna do this. I think I've had this tucked in. So a lot of this is just kind of remembering where you were gonna lay things out and kind of checking back. Um, and as you go, you know, you're using your intuition. So much of collage to me is being fluid and flexible and intuitive, but at the same time, there's a kind of a discipline to being clean and precise. Um, at least for me, there is. 
again, everybody's got a different way of working and a different aesthetic, so there's no two artists that work the same way, but um, I do like to have kind of an interesting mix of precision and flexibility. All right, so um, got a few pieces left. I've got a piece that's a little more complicated here because I wanna have it overlay one, but um, be tucked in under another. And I mentioned that you can lift up pieces. Um, and if you don't have enough glue, you can always go back in and add a little bit more. It's always probably better to have a little less than too much because uh, if you have too much, you have a lot more to clean up off of your paper. So, I'm going to go ahead and glue these last couple pieces down. And sometimes with glossy uh, paper, you might need a little bit more glue. It just really depends on the texture of the piece that you're, you're gluing down. But this was um, probably, I imagine, like the, uh, the front of some magazine or something. So come in and do something like that. So when you get close, you want to sort of start kind of really hitting all the corners, all the edges down. Got one more piece here. And um, I always like to, when I'm kind of towards the end, um, I would encourage you to take probably a clean piece of this type of paper towel. This one's not too bad, so I'm gonna use it, but you can always get some fresh paper towel, especially if it's starting to get really sticky. But uh, the great thing about this is if it's just damp, um, you wanna really squeeze any extra water out of it, you can just very gently uh, almost like a sponge, um, if you see any excess glue, you just kind of uh, dampen it and moisten it and um, go around and just make sure all your edges are sort of free of, of glue. And once you've done that, then the very last thing to do is um, Sometimes, depending on whether you have any pieces that are sort of sticking up or curling up, uh, you can take a part of the uh, paper or hopefully a paper bag rather than newspaper or just plain old um, copier paper. And I like to put it without the ink side face down. And then you can stack some books on it or some magazines and leave it there for an hour and it'll really help flatten everything out and let the uh, glue settle and dry so that when you lift it up um, it should be very pristine and really dry and um, should be good to go. Looks pretty good.